Hello friends, welcome back to my class. So this video is the continuation of the previous video based on the topic current electricity for the exam GPSTR 2022 from physics. Okay, so before moving to the concept, all those who have not yet subscribed to our channel, please do subscribe and press the bell icon so that you will get the notifications of all the videos we upload here related to GPSTR exam 2022 and check in the description box there the links are given for mathematics and physics classes you can also refer those videos for the exams okay let's move into the topic now we learn about series and parallel combination of resistors okay important topic there are chances of uh, uh, numericals and also multiple choice questions from this concepts so let's learn simultaneously we'll check out series and parallel combinations before proving we'll check out the concept in case of series connection of resistors if the resistors are joined one after the other then it is called a series connection so look at this figure resistor three resistors are considered r1 r2 and r3 these are connected one after the other a b is the end of two ends of the resistor r1 and end of b is connected to r2 end of c is connected to r3 and the circuit it follows like that and now in case of parallel connection one end of each resistor is connected to the one point you see one end of the each resistor to connect to the one point and other end of each resistor is connected to the other point only two points we have considered point a and point b and for each resistor the ends are connected to the same points for this end a same a a here b b b okay this is our parallel connection and along with that of course in a circuit we have a battery and a switch also and the formula to calculate the combination of the total resistors connected in series that is r s is equal to if three resistors are given r1 r2 and r3 let's prove that before that you, let's check one more point look at the diagram here from the battery there flows a current from positive to negative and it is represented by letter i and you see it is common through r1 current i is passing through r2 also current i r3 also current i so there is a common current in the circuit but in case of parallel you can see here from battery there flows the current from positive end and here it is dividing the current through r1 is i1 current through r2 resistor is i2 current through r3 is i3 okay and hence your current varies but the potential between the point a and b is the same but here the potential between the point a and b c is different potential at point v1 between the point a and b is v1 here it is v2 here it is v3 but between these two points it is v itself is common hence there is a common potential in case of parallel connection okay so let's prove now the formula so suppose if at all I ask this to prove for three marks you, you have to write descriptive type here we'll focus on the main points you have to add up how you explain that okay so we can write by ohm's law the potential between the points a and b is v a minus v b let's take that as v1 which is equal to i is common r1 is different so i r1 so between b and c between this b and c is i i into r2 between c and is i into r3 so here the total sum will be 
v is equal to v1 plus v2 plus v3 and substitute the values of this v1 v2 v3 in this equation we get i is the common factor take it out and we get v is equal to i of r1 plus r2 plus r3 take this as equation number one and we can also check the potential between this two points a and d since we are calculating the equivalent resistance between these two points v is equal to v a minus v d that is nothing but i is the current and r s is a series resistance in series so i into r s compare this equation 1 and 2 left hand sides are equal hence equate the right hand sides i into r s is equal to i of r1 plus r2 plus r3 i i get cancels therefore r s is equal to r1 r2 plus r3 so this is the formula to calculate if resistors are connected in series fine usually this we will be using to calculate the numerical i will be taking one more class based on only this numericals of resistors okay in the following classes we will try to take and moving to resistors in parallel we are going to prove that 1 by r1 sorry 1 by rp is equal to 1 by r1 1 plus 1 by r2 plus 1 by r3 so as i have told you earlier there is a common potential difference but current varies i is equal to the sum of i1 i2 and i3 here and we know the value of i1 i1 is the value that is nothing but v by r1 this is from ohms law v is equal to i r formula same potential but change the value of i1 and r1 so i1 is v by r1 i2 is v by r2 i3 is v by r3 substitute all these values here and we get i is equal to v by r1 plus v by r2 plus v by r3 and take this as equation number one now the current between this two ends a and b in case of i which is nothing but resistance in parallel i is equal to v by rp compare equation one and two left hand sides are equal equate right hand sides we get like this and all this v are common okay you can take it out this v and cancel that at last we get 1 by rp is equal to 1 by r1 plus 1 by r2 plus 1 by r3 remember it is not rp is equal to it is 1 by r1 1 by rp is equal to 1 by r1 plus 1 by r2 plus 1 by r3 we have taken an example of three resistors in series and parallel and hence we got this equation suppose you get two resistors in series what will be the answer for that rs is equal to r1 plus r2 here same way for parallel if only two resistors are there 1 by rp is equal to 1 by r1 plus 1 by r2 it goes on like this you can take lcm and simplify this equation further in order to substitute for the formula clear okay so meanwhile if you like this class please give a like so that we will come to know that at least you watch this videos and then it will help us to upload more videos related to gpstr exams okay let's move into the topic emf emf stands for electromotive force okay it is quite different from voltage or the potential difference let's check it out so first i'll tell the definition and then we'll explain how do we define emf when there is no current is drawn from the cell that it is if it is an open circuit then the potential difference between the terminals are called as emf so we have considered a cell in open circuit here so in a container we take dilute sulfuric acid solution and we have taken two uh, plates of copper and zinc 
whereas copper reactor is a positive and zinc reactor is negative and these two are not connected hence it is a open circuit then the potential difference between these two ends are called as emf okay when the circuit is open and it is represented by symbol epsilon this is how we represent e we can also define em of a cell in case of energy that is it is defined as the energy spent per unit charge in taking a positive test charge around the complete circuit around the complete circuit that is um, both inside and outside of the cell is called as emf so this nothing but work done in bringing the charge so emf is equal to w by q we write and there are factors affecting this emf emf depends on material of the electrodes which we choose here and it also depends on electrolyte used in the cell these two are placing important role here playing important role that is what type of electrodes we choose whether you choose copper or zinc okay or what type of electrolyte this solution what type of solution we use it depends on that okay you can remember this two points again what is the s unit of emf it is nothing but volt v and um, in case of uh, different type of cells emf will be different for example you have might have heard about daniel cell um langlen cell all this will be different okay some standard values will be fixed for those in practical cases we learn those then okay now let's move to joule's law of heating so the amount of heat produced in a wire uh, when the current is passing through it depends on three factors one is it depends on current then it depends on resistance and depends on time for which the current is flowing let's see how it depends h is directly proportional to i square the amount of current passing through the wire is directly proportional to square of the current through it then it also directly proportional to the resistance through the wire and the heat is directly proportional to time for which it flows hence all this h is common and we can rewrite the equation like this combine them we'll get h is proportional to i square r into t whenever we remove the proportionality sign we insert a constant that constant value is given as 0.24 h is equal to 0.24 i square into rt so here this relation is known as joule's law of heating okay and we can also check it out with the value here one calorie of the heat is equal to 4.18 joule okay clear so if you like the videos please give a like and don't forget to subscribe the channel when you are watching our videos without subscribing please do subscribe so that you will get all the videos which we upload here related to gpstr exams and also share to your friends those who are in need of this will be also helpful for cet exams tet and also for central tet exams okay keep preparing for the exams if you want any topics to be repeated you can comment in the comment box okay thank you for watching thank you